2024 sign right there in the front row. Bukele! 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 Come on, Bukele! 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 In Max a couple of hours, when uh, the president comes on, Bukele! Bukele! Max and Stacy, I'm so excited to talk to you because uh, as a former broadcast journalist, you were the first two people talking on TV like a decade ago about Bitcoin, and you've orange-pilled more people than anyone else I know. So first of all, round of applause for that because they've gotten a lot of people into Bitcoin. So let's talk a little bit about El Salvador. How's life there? It's filled with volcano energy because everybody... <laughs> has coffee from a volcano. If anybody wonders how Max Kaiser is able to walk out on stage like that everywhere he goes, it's because he, he has coffee from a volcano. And President Bukele makes his own brand now, is Beanafire, beanafire.com. You could actually go buy some, big, some coffee right now from President Bukele. I swear to God, he actually grew it himself personally, and you could buy it with Bitcoin or uh, over Lightning. Sounds like freedom. Yeah. Sounds like economic freedom. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about living in El Salvador, what it's like, what Bitcoin adoption has been like over the last couple of years, because a lot of people were at the Bitcoin conference. That was the first one I attended, 2021, when the announcement was made that it was going to be legal tender. First country to do so. So how has it been since then? <sighs> Does everybody want to hear the answer to that, or do you want to hear about Trump? Yeah. You see, they want to hear about what Trump said about President Bukele. Well, you know what? What I think about that is that President Bukele is the biggest rock star on earth right now, right? As a lead. Okay? Last night at two in the morning, I was up, and who tweets at, well, I'm sorry, post to President Bukele, but Elon Musk, right? Uh, president Trump, the 45th president of the United States, sp spends part of his RNC convention speech to millions and millions of people, an important speech, and he mentions one leader, one other head of state, and that is President Bukele. So uh, never in El Salvador's history did, were they so important. Was the head of state ever that important? And I think it just shows that um, good times are ahead because I think El Salvador is now an important player on the world map, and I think um, also... I think probably many people in this audience have actually been to El Salvador. You see? Don't trust verify. So just as they were booing what President Trump had said <laughs> before about Bitcoin being a scam, uh, most of these people in this room have been to El Salvador and they know, for, they verified for a fact that it's safe and that things are changing for the better there. Well, I did want to address what happened in that speech. So let, can we dig into it a little bit more? Because I think it took a lot of people by surprise. Um, there was the inauguration. I know both of you were there. And we saw a lot of prominent Republican figures there, including Don Trump Jr., right? Matt Goetz was there. So where do you think that came from? And a, a jealousy. Because uh, at CPAC, uh, you know, President Bukele gave a speech. Donald Trump gave a speech. And who was everyone talking about? President Bukele. So Donald Trump, like, you know, got a little jealous. And he's like, oh, I got to, you know, talk this guy down. But President Bukele is the most popular leader in the world right now. Bitcoin is legal in El Salvador, and it is the new shining city on a hill. El Salvador is the first country out of yeah. the turning. You know, right? El Salvador is a beacon of freedom. Uh, El Salvador is uh, put, already put Bitcoin on their reserve. All these uh, politicians are up here saying we're going to put it on our reserve. Well, guess what, folks? They're lying because they're held in the pockets of the central bankers and Jamie Dimon and uh, all those uh, folks are, are not going to let them do that. Uh, so if you really want freedom, you want to smell the volcano of freedom, move to El Salvador, do, you know, uh, what... Ayn Rand suggested, if you're not treated well in your country, leave. Get the fuck out. Go to a real country like El Salvador with a real leader, with real people, and real entrepreneurialism. Fuck the U.S. You know, they're not giving you what you want. You don't get freedom of speech. You don't get freedom of expression. You don't get freedom of any kind of freedom. You know, move with your feet. The voting, not going to get you nothing. Walk out. Walk. 
What did you think of his response? Bukele tweeted back that um, he's going to take the high road. Did you get well, the inside scoop on yeah, how he really feels? because he's a leader, right? So he takes the high road, but we're not leaders. <laughs> no. No, we're like the IRA. We take the low road. I'm like the Bobby Sands of El Salvador. So for people that watch that and maybe don't know a lot about El Salvador, why is what President Trump said wrong? Because he suggested that the president and El Salvador were dumping criminals over the border into the U.S. Not only is that materially and factually wrong, but it's highly offensive because the MS-13 gang was birthed in Los Angeles and then the Clintons dumped them in El Salvador and they went on to kill tens of thousands of Salvadorans. So, you know, that is highly offensive to suggest that uh, the opposite is true, okay? So you know, that's why I got my dander up, because it's not just being cute. He's just not trying to be a rival at the sorority cotillion, like, oh, he's got a better dress than I do and being a bitch. He's making factual errors. He's saying the wrong thing, and he's insulting tens of thousands and millions of Salvadorans, and the Salvadorans made Bitcoin legal tender. Salvadorans are the beacon of free speech. The Statue of Liberty is now a volcano in El Salvador. So, you know, get in line, pal. And let me tell you something. You don't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you, Donald. So, you know, you've got to come to the Bitcoin side. You know, you've got to get in line. Um, You've got to bend the knee, which you probably are not going to be able to do. Uh, you certainly won't hear much uh, out of one ear. No, that's too soon. That's too soon, man. Too soon? Well, it's a rough world, okay? Bitcoin fixes this. It demonetizes violence, okay? Well, you actually said on the first podcast that I did with you that Bitcoin is an explosion of love. And sometimes we need to share a little love with our enemies to get them to understand maybe what they're wrong about. So show a little, do you have a little love you want to show for I Trump? I do. I have a special flower for Donald Trump when I see him. I'd like to present this flower and express my love and gratitude for at least rise, raising the political game in America to a new standard of forthrightness and truthfulness and I, I'm a big Trump supporter, and I am voting for Trump for a third time coming up in this next election. But, you know, Trump is from New York, I'm from New York, and so we speak like New Yorkers. So, you know, this is how we do it in New York, and uh, that's the way it is. Yes, exactly. We're, uh, we did vote for Trump, and we will vote for Trump. And I, I, I believe that he's the best hope for the United States in terms of Bitcoin policy. And... Um, the, the restoration, you know what, and Bitcoin in El Salvador falls under President Bukele's policy of economic liberty. And that is very American in the concept. It's an enlightenment ideals of, of life, liberty, and property. And the security situation in El Salvador also falls under those same sort of thinking of the president. So when, when Trump did misspeak. I'll, I'll say he misspoke, and I think he'll probably correct himself here once he shows up and he speaks in front of this audience here, and he'll see that um, this is President Bukele land here instead of, uh, you know, uh, somebody who hasn't yet proven himself in terms of Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin in El Salvador is economic liberty, and so was the, the security policy. Many people expected smaller countries and those furthest away from the money printer to be the first to embrace Bitcoin. But now we're seeing global superpowers, American presidential candidates talking about Bitcoin. What, what's your take on that? Did you see this all along in game theory? Uh, <laughs> Max did, I'll say. But I, I, I mean, this seems way sooner than I expected, right? And I didn't expect the U.S. to be El Salvador's first follower, because the United States will be our first follower, I believe. Um, but El Salvador is number one. We have the first mover advantage still. Um, I, I, we listened to RFK Jr.'s speech yesterday, and he was uh, great on, the, uh, on Bitcoin, really, really good policies on Bitcoin. And it's good, it's good that he's out there. It's good that RFK is out there, um, because I know he was unfairly, undemocratically excluded from the Democratic Party uh, process of, of, you know, debating Joe Biden six or seven months ago when the world could have figured out that, well, the voter could have known then what they now know now, and then instead be, you know, have Kamala Harris imposed on you. So um, I think, I've kind of lost my train of thought, but I, I, I think um, it's, 
it, it, we have two major um, candidates. We have RFK and we have Trump pushing for Bitcoin. And I think that's better. It's better for El Salvador, for sure, because El Sal you know, either the United States is our most important partner. And we also have the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency there in El Salvador, uh, you know, U.S. dollar and Bitcoin. So it's better if we're allies across the whole top and down. The, the, the analogy that I like is Bitcoin as gunpowder. So um, the, if one country adopts gunpowder, then you really have to adopt gunpowder as well to get into this um, paradigm of uh, mutual assured destruction or survival. And now we're entering into the global hash war or the global Bitcoin war, which I wrote about five years ago, when everyone was saying that, oh, all these countries are going to ban Bitcoin. I said, no, in fact, it's the opposite. They're all going to embrace Bitcoin. They're going to competitively mine Bitcoin and hoard Bitcoin uh, because it becomes a new uh, back global Bitcoin standard. And we'll see every fiat money go to its long-term value of zero. Uh, it's demonetizing gold. You see that in the ETF market. People are dumping gold ETFs and buying Bitcoin ETFs. It's demonetizing the stock market. It's demonetizing the bond market. It's demonetizing the property market. It's demonetizing the fine art market. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. So anything you hold as an asset, it's the purchasing power relative Bitcoin is going to go down. And um, so this is the realization that's creeping into the minds of folks who have been observing Bitcoin for a while. The political class is really interesting to see so many politicians up here talking about Bitcoin. They have the talking points and they sound good. Uh, I don't think they've given it a deep thought yet because it disintermediates politicians. Because not only will the central banks be disintermediated by Bitcoin, but so will the nation state as we know it. So the nation state will dissolve as well as the central banks and we'll have a new, and we already see this in El Salvador. President Bukele is already looking to the future of a decentralized governance model that's no longer going along with the 300 year tradition of the central bank model that we were used to. He's decentralizing. People call President Bukele a dictator. No dictator would give his people the ability to own Bitcoin, an unconfiscatable give, asset that gives you self-sovereignty. That's the opposite of di dictator, right? So, you know, this is what I suggest people who are gonna speak English, look at, up a dictionary for the definitions before they open their mouths and say these words because they're use, incorrectly using them. And, but come to me and I'll help you. And if in fact you don't take a suggestion, then I'm happy to get more um, forceful. I'm glad you brought up how Bitcoin will disintermediate and demonetize politicians. So I wanna better understand your philosophy on politicians because people are looking at everyone from Trump to President Bukele and saying, why are we so supportive of them? We're trying to basically shrink the state, shrink their power. Why should Bitcoiners be excited that these politicians are talking about Bitcoin? Shouldn't we not care about them? Uh, well, because like I said, for in El Salvador, President Bukele puts Bitcoin under his larger policy of economic liberty. And these are, you know, if you read the U.S. Constitution and you read about that, like, we, we're, we have the freedom to pursue life, liberty, and property, and pursuit of happiness. So this is the thing, these are the um, foundational ideas behind Bitcoin as well. And I think somebody who uh, basically will be there to defend those rights, you, th that's the purpose of the state. If you read Bastiat, if you read the law, like that's the purpose of the state is to defend those rights for you, for us, right? And that's all you want. You don't want all this other stuff and all the other stuff that the sorts um, like Kamala Harris might support, right? We, you want them to stay away from you, to stay out of your business and le to let you uh, just operate your own business and build. And, and that's what uh, President Bukele does all the time for El Salvador. He says, come build. This is what, soon we'll be giving away 5,000 passports to people who want to build, to highly skilled people who are motivated, who want to come build. That's what we want, builders, right? And so you want a leader who's going to be like that and stay out of your way. And anybody, any leader who's going to adopt Bitcoin is a leader who um, is easier to trust, I would say, because they're, they, they've already made that decision. That's a powerful decision for a leader to take. Is like, I'm going to give up power because I no longer have power over the printing press. 
So how do we discern when they're talking about Bitcoin if they really understand it or if they're just trying to get votes? Well, I, I think that, you know, Bitcoin is a magic mirror. And if you are of good character, it makes you even a better character. If you're a bad character, it makes you a worse character. If you look at somebody like a Craig Wright, the Bitcoin magic mirror revealed that he's a true scumbag. Ooh. <laughs> right? If you're somebody like a Michael Saylor, the Bitcoin mirror exposed somebody with a high degree of integrity and a passion for education and a deep understanding of Bitcoin. Same thing in the political class. You know, you have a Cynthia Lummis who I think you can say gets it. You know, she's been orange-pilled and she's working hard in politics to make positive things happen. Other people in politics who talk about Bitcoin will find out soon enough whether or not they're just being narcissistic, self-serving assholes or whether they are genuinely hardcore Bitcoiner maximalists. You know, you know, nobody escapes the guillotine. You know, Bitcoin is the new guillotine of the 21st century. All the toffs who are posing and not really worthy of the power that they get you know, you're gone. Goodbye. Bye. Have a nice day. You're going to be disintermediated and you're going to zero. By the way, I want to say there is something that Trump did that is so Bitcoin, and that is to get up and say, fight, fight, fight. That was pretty Bitcoin. Okay. That was honey badger of him. Uh, that was, uh, that was wild to see. And it, if it, it seemed like a uh, Bitcoin meme of the era of, say, 2015, 2016 come to life, right? Like, it seemed like the, a honey badger, like, everybody's watched those videos over and over, right? Where you see, like, well, these things are insane. What are they doing? Why are they taking on that lion? And it seemed like that to me. So, uh, you know, that was good. That's very Bitcoin. So are you hoping President Trump makes his way down to El Salvador, maybe pays you guys a visit, sees what it's like down there? Yeah, he should pay us. <laughs> that sounds like a threat. He's going to pay you a visit. <laughs> it's very New York, you know, yeah. you know, I'm going to pay you a little visit. No, we have some coffee for him. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I uh, like, we'll give him this one. Like, I have a brand new package for him to give him, but we're going to give him this opened one now that uh, he was so rude, right? Yeah. yeah. Come on down to El Salvador. You're welcome anytime. Uh, Donald Trump, and look and observe how Bitcoin country operates and works. It'll be an inspiration. I know Don Jr. has been to El Salvador, and he's buying property in El Salvador. He's had great yeah. meetings with the president. And uh, the Gates has been to El Matt Salvador. Matt Gates. Matt yeah. Gates, you know, he's buying property. All the smart money is going to El Salvador. All the smart politicians are going. So it's only a matter of time before the orange pill drops and the Donald makes his way to San Salvador. We only got a couple minutes left. I did want to ask you, I saw you paid a visit to NVIDIA on behalf of El Salvador. What's that about? Uh, El Salvador is becoming the tech hub of Central America. So when, you, uh, when we have our website up and you're able to apply for citizenship, if you w are willing to come build, you know, 5,000 of, of you we're looking for. Um, part of this is we, we are planning on being the tech hub. Because remember, President Bukele just pivoted to the economy for the second term. And so uh, we have very big plans. Kathy Wood, she said that the El, the El Salvador's GDP is going to increase by 1,000% in the next five years. And she believes because of Bitcoin and AI. So she's the one that told us we have to do this. Like, she made that prediction. We need to make it come true. <laughs> well, final thoughts. Last couple, last couple seconds here. What do you want people to know about Max and Stacy and El Salvador? Well, we would love for you to come join us. So the more, the merrier, and we're building amazing things. And I think there's, uh, I, I think we're very excited to have a first follower. And I think it's going to be good for the relationship between the United States and El Salvador when we're a Bitcoin country here as well in the United States. Yeah, I would just second that. You know, come on down and visit for a week or two and get to know the country. And I think, you know, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And um, a lot of people who visit end up living there. And the opportunities are fantastic. We're opening up a Bitcoin bank soon. So you'll be able to borrow against your Bitcoin, buy some property. And you've got both a rise in the property price plus your Bitcoin at the same time. Plus you've got a brilliant place to live. Plus building is about 150 dollars per square foot, which is about 90% cheaper than you find anywhere else. So you've got the bank for the bank for the bank for your, for your Bitcoin. So it's really the opportunity of a lifetime. Well, you said earlier, don't trust Verify. I had the chance to spend some time with you in El Salvador. I didn't know what to expect. 
It was one of the friendliest, most hope-filled places. We got to go to Hope House and talk to some um, girls. We, we taught them about Bitcoin. And so I think that a lot more people will be moving with their feet, maybe not just to El Salvador, but Bitcoin nations around the country. So thank you so much, Max and Stacey, everyone. All right. Next year, we are bringing the Bitcoin conference to the American West, Las Vegas. The brightest minds in the world will converge to deliver Bitcoin history. Buy your tickets now at b.tc slash conference slash 2025.